everybody and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel. It's been a while since we kicked the tires on a Linux distribution and today we have a Linux distribution that I've never used before. In fact, I, I haven't even noticed it before. Chalet OS. Chalet OS is a beginner-friendly Linux distribution, uh, the developers of which their aim is to help those or facilitate those moving from Windows to Linux. Once again, it's Xbuntu based. Uh, it sports an XFCE desktop. It's based on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, long term service. And it's the name Chalet is interesting. It's derived from the Swiss mountain houses, where the concept is simplicity and beauty. This, according to the developers. So let's dive right in and see if this thing. Um, actually uh, does what the developers set out for it to do. Here we have the login screen post installation. Uh, I will inform you that we have logged in and we performed all the updates. Uh, any issues that we had will be discussed later. What we see here is post uh, installation and update. So we have the login screen, a color scheme kind of reminiscent of uh, a Windows uh, release that we shall not mention. <laughs> Here we have at the top power, the calendar, of course, accessibility options, uh, English US, and the XFCE session, which is set up. Interesting, it allows you to go straight into straight Ubuntu, Xbuntu, I should say. Uh, and let's log in and see what this thing has to offer. Cruising by in DistroWatch, I saw this and I decided, hey, you know, uh, let's give this a try. Let's kick the tires and see what it says. Here we have the default desktop. Nothing has changed. Once again, we did log in and perform some updates. Uh, we did have an issue post-install with the update manager spinning out a few errors. Uh, but that was solved fairly quickly and uh, things seem to be working now. Uh, having done all the updates that we finally got uh, installed on the system. Uh, so that might be a slight hiccup either for us or for other people depending. Uh, here we have a clock on the desktop which is not clickable, not movable. It's uh, part of the desktop. On the desktop we have the settings manager, my computer, start point, style manager. Yeah, we move below to the uh, to the <clears throat> toolbar at the bottom, we have the uh, minimize and open windows and show the desktop. This is an interesting location for this icon. Uh, the majority of distributions that I have used uh, generally has this icon over here, uh, which I think is actually a better placement, probably because that's where I'm so used to it, having been for so, so uh, many years in uh, using Linux and testing various distributions. Uh, here we have the calendar. Uh, I won't take points off for the location of this, by the way. It's just something I'm not used to, but it's there. Um, we have the volume sliders for the audio. Here's we have the networking. Okay, uh, battery. Computer is fully charged. We have this uh, UPS as part of the system, and here. We have various different uh, desktop. It's the Conkey switcher. We can switch between different desktop applets, as uh, we've shown right now. So we've basically turned off the clock. And here we have uh, the uh, CPU usage, time, uh, battery, and the amount of RAM used. That's a very nice uh, little display, actually. I like that. Moving over on the left side, we have a file search, Catfish file search, good, good thing to have. Uh, the file manager, which in this case, I believe it looks like Thunar. Yes, Thunar 1.6.10. Uh, post update up to the time of the recording of this video, this is the version we have of Thunar. Here we have. Mozilla Firefox, which is a reasonable choice for the default web browser and works quite well. Uh, 
no problems with that at all. And we have the program menu here. And we'll go into that a little later, take a look at what comes installed by default. Here we have the settings menu. Uh, appearance, much like style changer of course, desktop, file manager, notifications. Uh, it's not exactly the most complete I've seen on different distributions, but uh, I like it that way. I like where you can build a, up from scratch and do your own thing and just make it yours. Of course, for a distribution that prides itself on being beginner friendly, uh, adding too much can be a, a positive and a negative thing. It can be positive in that the new user has a lot of GUI tools to use to basically um, uh, configure everything they need in the system. The negative part is it might be too much for that same said new user. So it's a happy medium here. Uh, there's a few things in here that uh, are very familiar with, of course. Uh, screen size, settings, workspaces, window manager, tweaks, power, mouse and touchpad, keyboard, removable drives, and media. And you can, all these different settings you can have here, which is pretty good. All done in a nice GUI. Okay. So that's uh, one application we've looked at. Interesting is the start point, where basically it's it's an online help in a way. It, it, it helps you to get acclimatized to the system and to uh, be more efficient at using it. And here we have the statements such as uh, why they made Chalet OS, reason for making a start point, and I'll read it out to you quickly. We understand that new users wonder is there enough applications for Linux here we can find information about some of the applications that we recommend with them installed you enjoy more in shallow OS I think this is actually a good thing in particular when you have people coming over from the Windows world the number one comment I get is I need to find equivalent applications that do what I need done under Windows and my response is usually they exist um, most definitely tell me what you need and I'll give you advice on to what you can use uh, I'm not obviously I'm not talking about chromium which exists in the Windows world as Chrome or Firefox or Opera or Thunderbird or anything like that but there are other things that they will look at for example uh, Libra office and uh, other office suites and a few other things that they may not be familiar with but are fantastic in what they set out to do so this is pretty good so here we have the welcome we have how to, how to tab how to install shallow OS alongside windows we have different videos here and information uh, recommended apps that you can install Kodi, lightworks music there's a few different ones here clementine which i like a lot sm player sm youtube all these different things And it will take you to the application's website. And if it's available in their software center, it'll say this application is available in the software center and may not be the latest version. So it tells you right away if it's available. But the one failing I have here is it will not take you directly to the software center to install it instead it'll send you to the uh, website of said application uh, let's look at what's included of course the uh, my computer settings we've seen all of this before here's the application center and as in most Ubuntu derivatives the application center is pretty easy if not a little bit busy to look at you'll see um, on the left uh, everything is categorized if I'm looking at internet it'll give me a list of internet applications that are available uh, if I need to search it'll allow me to search for applications top rated applications um, zip accessories Ubuntu restricted uh, FileZilla workspace SM player and whatnot uh, so that's one disconnect I find with this in that it has uh, the start point 
has most of the checkboxes in the right area except for the fact that it will not start up the Ubuntu Software Center. It would be nice if it could if you clicked on an app and immediately start the Ubuntu Software Center and take you to that apps page so you can quickly download and install it rather than going to the website of that application uh, and if you're not familiar with Linux having to go and download a Linux version and install it from scratch may be a little daunting for the beginners although it's quite simple to do so that's included um, okay here's all the apps here we have the settings about me additional drivers of course that's when you need for example if you're running in a video card or an AMD video card and you want proprietary drivers that's the tool that's included an excellent tool by the way in most Ubuntu based distributions appearance auto mount much of the stuff we've seen cleaner this is interesting in order to keep your system up and running almost like a um, Linux version of CC cleaner not as thorough I should say could please excuse me I can't say it's not as thorough it's just not as feature full but it's there and I uh, applaud them for including it um, <clears throat> we have as root uh, this is another thing um, brand new users to Linux have to get comfortable with the idea that by default in the majority of Linux distributions you are not an administrator when you create an account uh, in, uh, many distributions uh, during the installation time will allow you to create an administrator account and this is a disconnect I find too with a lot of uh, Windows users who come over to Linux why do I have to enter in my password so often well I said you don't have to you can change it so that your user has certain administrator privileges and that's over their head uh, for most newbies but I think it's a it's a very positive thing I think that uh, too many people operate their PCs as administrator and a lot of bad things can happen when that's done in particular if you're not really PC savvy but that's just my opinion desktop conky switcher as we saw before file manager networking there we have printers now this is another thing under settings we have printers but if I go to settings here there is no printer icon so on the desktop the settings manager does not have anything to do with printers listed I have to go to the start menu excuse me that's a leftover from my Windows years uh, the program menu in order to get that functionality uh, again this is something that I would have included inside the settings manager immediately uh, right over here under hardware I would put the printer instead of people having to dig uh, if you want to make the system for beginner friendly make it beginner friendly beginner friendly to a point in my opinion means putting things in people's face that they're going to need right away especially after booting up you're going to want to set up your printer you're going to want to make sure your resolution is pretty correct which Linux gets most of the time 99% of the time 95% of the time you're going to want to do different tweaks and stuff and I think it's advantageous if you would just make it a little bit more accessible in that regard but that's I'm nitpicking in a way but I hope most people will see what I'm coming at one click maintenance that's an interesting tool partition editor printers again software updater yes as with most Ubuntu derivatives there is an automatic software updater will indicate when there's updates and will show you down in the taskbar uh, to the right side and you can run your updates software and updates start point startup disk creator interesting thing to have very good to have Synaptic package manager, of course, for your packages, time and date, USB stick formatter, a lot of wine tricks. If you want to try and get some of those Windows software that you can't do without working under your Linux desktop, there's a number of things here that look like they're very uh, doable. I wonder why the decision was made to leave them out of the settings uh, app on the desktop, but again, it's a balance as I said before a balance between presenting too little and presenting too much in particular when they're going after beginners I just would have hoped that 
they would have had in the settings on the box. Once again, the uh, settings um, app on the desktop, I would have hoped that they would have included a printer setup. But then again, let's continue. Accessories, we have Archive Manager, Bulk Rename, the website, Cleaner, of course, a lot of other apps. One-click maintenance. Welcome to All-in-One System Update and Maintenance Assistant app. This simple script will automatically refresh your package list, download and install updates if there are any, remove any old kernels, obsolete packages and configuration files to free up disk space without any need of user interface. Interesting tool. I haven't used it. I couldn't tell you if it works successfully, but uh, the aim of it seems very good. Graphics, we have of course Document Viewer, GIMP, Simple Scan, Internet, Firefox is there. Uh, online video downloader, that's nice. A great little radio player. I like clicking on some of these more obscure apps, uh, applications, because sometimes they don't work properly. And I'd like to point that out as well. Uh, this one seems to be having an issue with hanging. And then we go down to Office. Um, great little bookshelf document viewer. LibreOffice is not installed by default, nor is any Office Suite. Mm. I think I'll have to take uh, half a point off for that. Again, beginner friendly, put everything in their face, give them all the tools they need to be productive immediately. And I think it would have been better if LibreOffice was installed by default. Okay, you have your terminal, Thunar, Multimedia, Audacious, Brasario, great little radio player, online video downloader, Pulse Audio. That other software we tried to run, great little radio player, did not work. So obviously, uh, there's a few little kinks here in the armor. And the office suites, from what I could see, there's none installed at all. Hmm. So let me go now. Let's go to settings just taking a quick look again and to see what we have here let's go to the application center LibreOffice is available it's not installed checking to see if some other things are here spreadsheet so LibreOffice is available so to keep this video short and sweet what do I find about shallow OS and how would I rate it personally well I like it. It's 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 good to look at, nice looking, but I think there's a few failings in it that I hope will be addressed quickly in another release. This release is based on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Uh, once again, I think that for the beginner, there are probably better choices out there, uh, in particular for people who want to be productive immediately. Linux Mint comes to mind uh, most definitely. Even OpenSUSE, the latest one, OpenSUSE Leap, uh, may be a little bit more uh, friendly in terms of uh, being productive immediately. Uh, there's a number of other ones as well um, where you can hit the ground running. I think Shallow OS is on to something good but they need to tweak a little bit more and think a little bit more if they're presenting this for those who are moving from Windows to Linux they need to really think what do I need immediately after installation uh, I need my apps to work all of them if at all possible I need to be able to be productive immediately I need to be able to find things quickly and easily and I want the system to be stable. 
being that it's based on Ubuntu, I'm fairly certain that the stability is, is good. But as we've seen, here's a style changer, which we haven't looked at, which is very nice at changing the way it looks and uh, customizing. I, I, I would have to say that Shallow OS is hit and miss in certain areas. Uh, a person like me, I'm not a beginner, and it actually makes it a little bit more difficult to think like a beginner. But I really do believe that a beginner wants everything set it up. This is what I'd use. This is what I click on. This is how I go. Let me get productive. I want to print right away. I want to use all the apps. Check out it. I want to bump, kick the tires. Check out all the applications. See what's available. And I think in that regard, Shallow S probably scores about a six and a half to seven out of ten in terms of uh, getting new users right away set up and good to go. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad Linux distribution and I really hope that other people would try it out and kick the tires and see if they like it themselves. So that's it. That's my review of Shallow OS. Uh, once again, if you like what you see, subscribe, tell others about it. Let's get this channel growing. I'm going to try to put more content as much as I can. It's difficult, but I'm really going to try and get it done. So uh, take care and thanks for watching.